The planet Earth was rocked by a massive asteroid impact 65 million years ago, which wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs and many other species. However, from this devastation, a new world emerged, one that would be shaped by the survivors of the apocalyptic event. In the aftermath of the extinction, mammals and other small creatures that had been lurking in the shadows of the dinosaurs began to thrive and diversify, eventually giving rise to the incredible range of life forms that we see on Earth today. This new world was filled with strange and wonderful creatures, from enormous ground sloths to giant birds to saber-toothed cats and massive ground sloths. In the ocean, ancient reptiles like the Ichthyosaurus and Plesiosaurus were replaced by new and formidable predators. Come along as we explore the Earth. The world's landscapes have also changed, with enormous grasslands and forests extending across the continents and creating new habitats for a variety of species. Following the dinosaurs was a period of amazing change. Following the extinction of the dinosaurs about a million years later, the Earth was a very different place from what it is today during this time known as the Paleogene period. The continents were still in the process of moving and changing shape, and the planet was much warmer than it is now, with tropical forests spreading across the globe and the sea levels were much higher. The earlier Paleogene was characterized by the proliferation of mammals, birds, and reptiles, many of which were quite different from the species we see today. The ecosystems of the time were also different, with different food webs and interactions between species, and began to evolve and adapt to the changing environments. With the huge dinosaurs now out of the way, mammals could exploit the planet's resources for themselves. Within a few million years of the asteroid impact, the fossil record shows an explosion in mammalian diversity. There is abundant fossil evidence for the evolution of shrew-like mammals called Morgana codontids that evolved into the mammals that we see today. Some of the earliest known mammal fossils from the Jurassic period, some 165 million years ago, were tiny, insect-eating creatures that resembled modern shrews in size and form. One of these is the Megazostridon, a 200-million-year-old species that was only 10 to 12 centimeters long. It was most likely nocturnal, feeding mostly on insects and small reptiles, and had an enlarged brain that was later found to process sounds and smells. This evolutionary feature most likely helped them avoid competing with reptiles or falling prey to dinosaurs. Although it may seem unlikely, all modern mammals, including humans, descended from this single line that lived in the water. Along with mammals, reptiles, fish, and birds were among the first creatures to emerge on Earth following the extinction of the dinosaurs. Ammonites, related to the modern-day Nautilus, were significant predators in the ocean and contributed to the preservation of the marine ecosystem's equilibrium. While the early reptiles included turtles, lizards, and snakes, the majority of the bird species were small and resembled modern sparrows in size. Fossil evidence demonstrates how these early mammals evolved over time in terms of size, morphology, and adaptation to particular environments and food sources. For instance, whales descended from a terrestrial ancestor that lived between 50 and 52 million years ago. Over time, these animals adapted to the water, losing limbs, shifting nostrils backward and upward, turning four limbs into flippers, and, of course, growing in size. This animal was named Pacist, and it was a four-legged creature about the size of a goat that scientists now recognize as one of the first whales. The Miocene era saw a wide variety of marine animals inhabit the oceans, including many that are still there today, like dolphins, whales, sea lions, seals, sea turtles, and various fish species. However, there were also many prehistoric marine animals that have since gone extinct. Fossils of Pachycetus have been found in the Tethys Sea region, which was a shallow sea that existed between the ancient continents of Gondwana and Laurasia. The huge prehistoric shark known as Megalodon is supposed to have emerged some 23 million years ago during the Miocene epoch. It was a top predator in the ocean and might have reached a length of up to 108 meters, making it one of the largest known sharks to have ever lived. Some of the other prehistoric marine animals that were present in the oceans during the time the Megalodon was swimming around were creatures such as Basilosaurus, which was a large prehistoric whale that could grow longer than 15 meters in length, lived during the Eocene, and was one of the earliest known whales. There was another top predator in the oceans at that time, and it was something even bigger than Megalodon. We're talking about Liviatin, a prehistoric whale that lived around 8 to 12 million years ago during the Miocene epoch. This whale is estimated to have been about 13 meters long and had massive teeth, suggesting that it was a formidable predator. Predator Leviathan is a close relative of modern sperm whales, but there were more than just sharks and whales in the seas and oceans. 
Foran was a massive prehistoric fish that lived during the Devonian period and was known for its huge size, powerful jaws, and bony armor. The infamous Mosasaurus that the Jurassic Park movies brought to life was a type of marine reptile that lived during the late Cretaceous period. The largest fossil specimen measured was a whopping 17 meters long. The Mosasaurus had a long, streamlined body with four flippers and a powerful tail that allowed it to swim rapidly through water. These are just a few examples of the many creatures that evolved and adapted to aquatic life. Life did not only diversify and explode into many different species in the oceans, many odd and bizarre looking creatures also appeared on land. For example, rodents evolved from sea turtles, which were thought to be among the largest and most successful marine reptiles ever to have lived. The Mosasaurus, despite its size and fearsome appearance, was actually a type of lizard and was thought to be an archaic turtle. Members of the cat family Felidae are thought to have evolved from a group of small shrew-like mammals called Myacids, which lived during the Paleocene epoch approximately 66 to 56 million years ago. The Myacids were a diverse group of carnivorous mammals that were adapted to hunting small prey. Carnivores also descended from early shrew-like mammals and gave rise to cats, dogs, bears, and other predator species. The origins of modern mongooses can be traced to molecular acids. Over time, some acid species gained specific traits that increased their efficiency. Hunters with stronger jaws and retractable claws Proalyris, one of these specialized myacids, is thought to be among the first known cat-lag creatures. Around 30 million years ago, during the Oligocene period, Pluralyris possessed numerous traits shared by modern cats, like retractable claws and a stronger bite. Over time, Polaris changed and diversified, giving rise to several cat lineages with unique morphological characteristics, such as the saber-toothed cats. The Smilodontini tribe, which comprises Smilodon and Homotherium, is one of the most well-known families of saber-toothed cats. These cats were distinguished by their long, saber-like canine teeth, which they may have utilized for defense against predators as well as for hunting. The earliest known members of the Kennedy family of dogs are thought to have arisen between 56 and 33.9 million years ago, during the Eocene epoch. One of the earliest known Kennedys was a small animal that resembled a fox and lived in what is now North America approximately 40 million years ago. This animal is thought to be the ancestor of all modern canids, including dogs, wolves, foxes, and coyotes. However, there were other predators roaming the plains besides the ancient cats and dogs. The terror birds, also called forest russets, are a species of large, flightless, predatory birds that originated in North America about 2 million years after the dinosaurs went extinct. Although the exact date of the terror bird's appearance is uncertain, it is thought to have occurred between 62 and 58 million years ago, during the late Paleocene or early Eocene. One of the largest and final species of terror birds, Titanus valeri, ruled the continent for millions of years before going extinct about 1.8 million years ago, most likely as a result of competition from other predators and climatic change. Titanus was most likely a carnivorous bird that consumed a wide range of food, which would have included huge insects and other invertebrates, mammals, reptiles, and other birds. Fossils of Titanus have been discovered in several places in North and South America, some of the bones exhibit evidence of carnivorous feeding, such as tooth marks and damage from digestion. It's interesting to note that, although some modern birds are descended from dinosaurs, forest birds are not, instead, they are a separate and distinct group of birds that evolved independently from dinosaurs and are members of the Paleognathi group of flightless birds, which also includes the modern ostrich, emu, kiwi, and the world's deadliest bird, the cassowary. Not all strange and fascinating animals appeared to be birds. The Pleistocene epoch, which spanned from approximately 33.9 million years ago to 11,700 years ago, saw the emergence of several species of prehistoric sloths. Ground sloths, on the other hand, were the size of enormous bears and lived in Oligocene Park. They were quadrupedal and had large claws that were probably used for defense and digging. Tree sloths, on the other hand, lived from the Pleistocene epoch to the present day. They were arboreal and had long limbs and curved claws that allowed them to move easily through the trees. Today, the only species of tree sloths that still exist are the two-toed and three-toed sloths. One may wonder where the snakes are. Snake evolution is a complicated and poorly understood subject, but scientific evidence points to a group of small, lizard-like ancestors called stem squirmates that lived more than 100 million years ago during the age of dinosaurs. These early stem squirmates were probably small, insect-eating forest floor creatures that resembled the earliest shrew-like creatures. 
Over time, some of these stem squirmates evolved, becoming more elongated and legless. The oldest snake fossils, including Airfis, while snakes did not directly evolve from tiny shrew-like creatures, they did evolve from small lizard-like ancestors during the time of the dinosaurs and have since evolved to become the diverse group of animals that we know today. Underwood I dates back to approximately 95 million years ago and exhibits features that are similar to those of modern snakes, such as the presence of a flexible skull and a long, slender body. Titanopower is considered to be the largest snake ever discovered, with the largest known specimens estimated to have reached lengths of up to 12.8 meters long and weighed up to 1,135 kilograms. Finally, we reach our own ancestors. According to fossil evidence, early primates had small bodies, long tails, and hands and feet that could be used to grasp objects. Over time, primates evolved into the diverse groups of primates that we have today, including humans, apes, and monkeys. However, there is still a lot more to learn about our own species, so please let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it. We also appreciate your support by subscribing so we can continue to provide you with more videos in the series. Thank you for watching.